Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to our Saturday Upgrade and Commander Build video where we're going to be looking at the Tier 9 Premium Cruiser, uh, US Cruiser, the Alaska. So, as is traditional in these videos, we'll be talking about the modules, we're we'll talking about the upgrades, we'll be talking about the commander skills that I re recommend specifically, but also we'll look over some things like uh, armor layout, uh, the main battery, a defense maneuverability, concealment so on and so forth. So, uh, what kind of cruiser is Alaska? Well, kind of as evident in yesterday's video, um, she's more of a battle cruiser. Um, another sp specification or title they gave uh, for the Alaska was that large cruiser or maybe even like a super cruiser. Um, but battle cruiser, I feel like, was more in line with what I would say um, when you're comparing large cruiser to battle cruiser. And battle cruisers tend to be a bit stronger in armor, to have uh, a better, decent arrangement of larger guns, uh, maybe even the AA, uh, so on and so forth, and larger than just a normal cruiser. Uh, there's a picture of actually the Alaska next to the Missouri, and you can kind of see not super far off. They look really similar in the layout, um, so on and so forth. So uh, we are going to go ahead and look at the armor layout. So. When uh, discussing the uh, Alaska, uh, the foreign plating and the aft end plating are both 27 millimeters. You got a superstructure, uh, the classic 16 millimeter. And we're talking about the deck on the fore and aft end, also 27 millimeter. And then uh, the deck with superstructure and the guns, the casemate armor, uh, 36 millimeter. And then your guns, you know, it's going to very uh, you know your front of your plating of the armor plating of your main battery turrets are always going to be the most uh, strongest so that 325 millimeter and now what i really want to get to we'll take some of these things away is we want to look more at uh, the inner parts of uh, this ship so let's see let's zoom out here so you have this uh, armor belt 28 millimeter and then you can see there's this it's still the deck, that 36 millimeter, and then 21 millimeter there. So let's take that away. And then we get down more towards the Citadel, but you can see we have some side plating, 27 millimeter. Uh, we have 178 millimeter armor belt before you get to the Citadel. We take that away, and here's the Citadel. So it's a waterline Citadel. Like, I'm trying to see if this actually, I'm kind of getting closer to the mic too as I'm talking. I don't think any of it comes above the waterline. It's, yeah, it's just waterline. Yeah, you can tell from right through here. So it's the waterline citadel. So you've got this 26 millimeter, and then you have 260 millimeter uh, with a 19 millimeter plate on top. Um, and then the citadel Othwart ship, 51 millimeters. So when one of the things that's really stands out uh, against the heavy cruiser of the Buffalo is the Buffalo has this uh, citadel but it comes up and it's vulnerable then goes down um, so you're not you're less, less likely to take a citadel when you're talking about the Alaska in comparison to something like uh, the Buffalo um, but you still have to be careful about how much side you show uh, you can still be uh, very vulnerable so let's go ahead and overlook the ship. Um, she is a premium ship, which means that uh, your modules uh, is what you get. There's no need to research or upgrade um, to other modules. Um, I went ahead, since it's free, um, to redistribute the commander skills as this is during update 10.7, uh, where they're allowing us to do it because they did a rework of the commander rework of the rework of the commander rework. They've probably done a couple of reworks since the commander rework of 10.0. Um, so some of these things are going to change once we uh, add some commando skills on, but when we look at these 305mm turrets, we have a reload time of 17.6 seconds. Keep in mind that is with the main battery modification 3, which improves the main battery reload time. 180 degree turn time of 34.5 seconds, we'll be able to get that down. Uh, HE shell damage 4300, maximum AP shell damage 8900. So. I mean, you saw what we did to that Neptune. <laughs> and those uh, rather nice size hits we're getting on the Palmer as well. In yesterday's video, which link will be in the description if you want to see this build in action. Uh, hit points, 60,800. Uh, 60, uh, armor, you know, 16 to the 325 millimeter. 
Uh, you have three main turrets, you have six secondary turrets, uh, as well as 54 AA mounts. So actually, let's uh, let's look at this secondary defense, secondary armaments. It's on the side, so you've got this one here uh, on the front. And then you should have two along the side, and then the other one should be uh, center back. So these secondary turrets are 127 millimeter turrets. Uh, they have a range of 7.3 kilometers. So I've gotten a kill here and there with secondary armor of the cruiser. Um, six second reload time. When discussing the AA defense, uh, you can see there's a, quite the list here. Uh, we have these 20 millimeter. I'm not even going to know how to pronounce that one. Arlikon. Uh, you got 40 millimeter. And then you got the 127 millimeter. So it's dual purpose uh, secondary armament. Um, so there's just a, a lot going on here. A lot of these uh, bofers uh, all across the ship. You got 14 by four. And then these 20 millimeters, you know, lower along the ship. So when you're looking at, well, we'll get, we'll discuss the A defense here in just a moment. I wanna kinda keep getting through here. Um, the main battery firing range is 19 kilometers. The propulsion is 33 knots. Uh, so let's go into the upgrades. They'll kind of tie in more of what's going on here as well as looking at the consumables before we move on. For slot one, you have several options. Um, you have five in total, actually. Um, I recommend taking the main armaments modification one. What this does is it reduces the risk of your main battery uh, from becoming incapacitated, improves your main battery survivability by plus 50%, and your main battery repair time is reduced by negative 20% if your main battery should be knocked out. In yesterday's video, you saw that my main battery got knocked out um, from the last volley from a Palmer. So this got it back online sooner and I didn't have to use uh, a DCP to fix it. Damage control party. You also have the auxiliary armaments. Um, improves your secondary battery survivability and your AA survivability. Um, realistically, when you were talking about the Alaska, I mean, she has, she's got good AA. I mean, there's cruisers in the game that have even better AA than the Alaska. Um, but in my mind, you don't build necessarily the Alaska to be an AA uh, or secondary build for that matter, because there's just other cruisers that do a better job. The Seattle has better AA than Alaska. Uh, the Wooster definitely has really good AA. And I'm not sure how close the Des Moines is in the rating. Yeah, even the Des Moines has better rating, 83 and it's like 79 on Alaska. So um, there's other cruisers that do the, uh, the job better. Um, the main the, ba the main battery turrets, I think, are really the bread and butter, as well as the consumables with this ship. You don't need to take magazine modification one, because if you've been around, you guys know, I like to highlight the fact that you get the Juliet Charlie combat signal, which completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. If you're doing uh, ranked, randoms, clan battles, um, grand battles even, things like that, you want to take this uh, combat signal. Um, because it sucks when you're full health or the game's just started and you get detonated. Um, and now you don't even get the the signals anymore um, from achievements of being detonated. So uh, do yourself a favor. You always want to mount this guy. Um, not really going to talk about taking spotting aircraft. I mean, yeah, you, it increases the action time of the spotting aircraft. But uh, I think there's other things you can better do with the upgrade choices of the Alaska. Um, then you have damage control party modification, um, increases the action time of damage control party and fast damage control team consumables, consumable action time plus 40%. Eh, no, <clears throat> in my opinion, the main armaments is really where you want to go because you're keeping your bread and butter of the main battery turrets online. For the uh, second slots, uh, there's a couple of option, options you could take. Um, if you're starting off and you don't like say have you have coal to purchase one of these three um, upgrades from the armory, I probably recommend taking damage control system modification one. Um, reduces your risk of catching fire and risk of flooding. Um, otherwise, I think surveillance radar is your best route to go. What this does is it improves the action time of the surveillance radar consumable. So um, before we even get to the commander skills, because there's another skill that lengthens the time of our radar, our radar action time is 42 seconds. Um, without 
the upgrade I think is closer to 30. I think it's a 30 second radar. Um, and then you have the defensive AA. Again, there's, I mean, Seattle, like if you were wanting to take a tier nine cruiser for AA purposes, let's say you're divvying up with a tier 10 CV uh, player, tier eight, um, you I mean, you get that automatically uh, on the Seattle without actually having to sacrifice your hydroacoustic search or your radar. Hydroacoustic search modification, uh, this also increases the action time of your hydroacoustic search if you decide to take this, but really you take uh, Alaska for her radar. So the surveillance radar modification one is what I'd recommend purchasing. Uh, if you wanna see what that looks like, when you click on one of these, it automatically takes you into the armory. And you can see, uh, let's go to equipment. Oh, that did not work as I intended. Okay, let's go to armory. I'll show you guys what this is at because I'd like to highlight there's a coupon you can use and how much does it cost uh, for coal. View category. So you can see the surveillance radar modification one. You can use uh, a coupon. You get these once a month, 12,750 coal instead of the 17,000 coal. Um, so I always buy these uh, with a coupon and I just wait till the next month before I even consider spending coal. Uh, for slot three, um, you've got four options. You've got the main battery modification two, so this would improve your main battery traverse speed by plus 15%. You've got secondary battery modification, which extends your secondary battery firing range, and also you have a better uh, maximum dispersion of your secondary battery shells, meaning you're tighter on target. You have the AA gun modification, and you think you guys know how I feel about AA builds with Alaska at this point and aiming systems modification one, which you see is what I have mounted and what I would recommend because your dispersion of your main battery shells is improved by negative 7%. So that means um, you're further enhancing your main battery build and you're getting tighter uh, shot groups, just tighter dispersion with your main battery uh, when you're firing on target. So you're more likely to hit where you want to hit them at. You don't have torpedoes uh, on Alaska naturally, but you do get a little buff to your secondaries uh, with the firing range and the, the secondary batteries. So really, this is the ideal um, upgrade to take in slot three. Slot four, you've got three options. You can see I have uh, elected to go with damage control system modification two. This accelerates fire extinguishing and recovery from flooding. Fire extinguishing time, negative 15%. Flooding recovery time, negative 15%. Um, your DCP cooldown. Uh, reload time is 60 seconds, um, you know, and it's easy to kind of be set on fire in this day and age of worships with the HE meta. Um, so anything for me to improve my survivability uh, with the fourth slot, uh, I really want to go for that. Um, otherwise, I could see taking possibly, you know, the propulsion modification plant, which increases your acceleration time. Then you have steering gears modification. Um, improves your maneuverability, your rudder shift time uh, drops to negative 20%. Um, so this is your maximum speed. Your turning circle radius is, it's all right. Um, 850 meters uh, for the Alaska. And your rudder shift time is 13 seconds. So she's somewhat responsive. Um, uh, better than the Massachusetts. I think Massachusetts is like 14 uh, something, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just compare that. 15, okay. I don't have the commander on, so if I recall the commander, not so 15, right, right, right. Okay, we call the commander back. Um, I use the Alaska commander on my Massachusetts. I use them on my kid and Anchorage actually, so able to do that. Um, let's see, moving on. Uh, the fifth slot, uh, I have elected to take the concealment system modification one. I don't have Consumer Expert because we haven't mastered that. I redistributed it purposes for this video. But you can see right now, uh, with including the camouflage, we have a 13.5 uh, detectability range by C, um, 8.7 by air, and a short detectability range, two kilometers. And then you can also see detectability from submarines um, and how on the surface when they can detect you and at periscope depth where they can detect you. Uh, so yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> uh, you also have steering gears modification two and ship consumables modification one. Uh, this 
increases the action time of all ship consumables, meaning all these guys. Um, I still lean towards concealment because when you go for concealment build on Alaska, it really helps you to try to disengage um, and not having more of like a battleship uh, concealment. You have a bit more of a cruiser concealment going on. Of course, there's some exceptions. Some battleships have really good concealment for some reason. Um, main battery modification 3 for the slot 6 is what I have elected to take. Uh, the main battery load time is improved by 12%, which gets us down to that 34 point, or 17.6 second reload time. At the expense that it does uh, slow down your main battery traverse speed, but I can live with that because uh, I do take uh, the grease the gears um, skill on my commander. You also have um, gunfire control system modification 2. It extends your main battery firing range. Now your main battery firing range is 19 kilometers already. Um, I don't really see a need to increase this further. Ideally, you know, you're you're supposed to play more mid-range uh, with the ship. Uh, mid to sort of long. I mean, you can brawl, but not entirely because you're not really built to brawl in Alaska. There's other cruisers that do the brawling job better. But you're, so you're more mid to that longer range. And when I'm, I'm thinking mid, I'm saying more uh, in the radar range of that 10 kilometer uh, to back to let's say 15, 16. That's kind of the ranges I try to play Alaska in. I don't try to play her at, at far range just because um, you're not con not really helping your team um, with this type of ship. This Cruisers are usually more built to support your destroyers um, and kind of be that buffer zone between like the say enemy destroyers and your battleships. Um, auxiliary armaments modification 2, um, so this secondary battery reload time, it improves your secondary battery and your AA battery. Um, again, I think there's other cruisers that do a better job than trying to make an AA build out of Alaska, but of course you can do as you wish in this game. Um, let's see here, with the not taking a superintendent, we have three repair parties, um, we have the hydroacoustic search, and we have the surveillance radar. Now, you can choose between the hydroacoustic search and defensive AA. Um, defensive AA is good naturally, but hydroacoustic search is really good um, detecting torpedoes. Like you saw in yesterday's video, we uh, I went ahead and stopped and slowed down. We avoided all the Neptune torpedoes. Um, but realistically, again, take Seattle if you're wanting to go uh, an AA cruiser at tier nine. Uh, you also have spotting aircraft, you have fighter, and then surveillance radar. Um, again, I would recommend going for the surveillance radar over fighter or spotting aircraft, um, just because you're playing more to what I would say is Alaska strengths um, as a battle cruiser and being a formidable opponent on the field uh, to enemy ships. That's going to talk about that AA a little bit more. She got continuous damage of 370. We're actually going to be buffing this. And damage by shell explosions, 1,610. Uh, priority sector reinforcement, 50%. Firing range at 5.8. I feel like Alaska should be more like a 6. I feel like Des Moines should also be 6 or maybe even 6.9. But they're both 5.8. And we highlighted um, the guns on the ship as well. Um, yeah. So that means we can dive into the commander. So this is the commander I... Um, got with the Massachusetts when I purchased uh, the Massachusetts some time ago. And because it's the premium ships, I can move this commander around on premium ships, you know, Anchorage, um, Massachusetts, Alaska, KID. Um, and it works really well and helps me gain more elite commander XP because I'm always spending that, it seems. So what would I recommend for a 10-point build on the Alaska? Uh, well, first, actually, I'd recommend going for the Grease the Gears. Uh, main battery traverse speed is improved plus 15%, so actually it kind of buffs our artillery by 1%. Um, but now instead of a 34.5 second 180 degree turn time, we have a 30 second um, 180 degree turn time. Really good, especially if you get something like uh, a unique commander who's got the buff to the Grease of Gears and where the main battery traverse speed is even faster. Hey, that works really good uh, on Alaska as well. 
So for three point commander, I would next recommend going priority target because you need the defensive skill of awareness of what's happening in the battle. Um, because you know, you saw me in the video yesterday, again, that link to that video will be in the description, uh, where we were on, was it Northern waters? And I was kept looking off to my left to see, you know, is there going to be an enemy battleship? Like is the Iowa going to take a cheeky shot across the map? Um, this sort of just helps you be aware of knowing what's um, happening. Also helps you know when an enemy destroyer or cruiser might be dumping torpedoes on you when you see um, kind of, it's called like a uh, party target flash. So like, let's say you go from one uh, detected to detected to one detected to just detected. It means he's probably dumping torps on you at that point in time. So that's a really uh, nice benefit of party target. In addition to if you're overextended, all of a sudden there's like four or five enemy ships targeting you. That means you need to go dark or you need to start kiting away ASAP. Um, for a six point commander, I would actually recommend going with superintendent next. Um, sometimes I tend to recommend adrenaline rush um, as a six point commander build for cruisers. But for Alaska, the additional repair party, hydro acoustic search, the surveillance radar, um, is really good. You saw that I burned all four of my repair parties yesterday where we had 1.7 million potential damage. Um, and we still had a good what, half health, I think, by the end of the battle. Um, so I recommend this. And it also helps um, you get towards the end of the battle and there's still a destroyer or now a submarine around. Um, just helps you figure out where they might be and having that extra charge. 10 point commander, I'd recommend going to the concealment expert. So you're going to actually see how that changes here. So we went to 12.2 detectability range by sea instead of the 13.5 and our detectability by air went from 8.7 to 7.9. And you can see good buff there on the concealment rating too. So this is what I would recommend as a 10 point commander build. If the main battery traverse doesn't bother you, you could um, go for gun feeder and make this your 10 point build. Um, because what the gun feeder does is that it, the time taking the switch uh, between shell types is reduced by half. So it was 17.6 seconds. So cut that in half and you know, you're know you often switching between, um, I don't phrase this, you're often switching between shell types in the Alaska regularly between HE, because their HE is really good and armor piercing. So um, this is really a, a must uh, to have on the Alaska, but I do go for this skill, um, but this is what I went for 10 point skill and we will get to gun feeder. So we'll go ahead and master uh, this. Okay, so where I recommend going from here? Well, um, you, you could go several different ways. I will show you the route I believe it was that I took. For a 13 point commander, uh, I went for a drilling rush. So this enhances the ship's parameter for each 1% of HP lost. So my main battery is going to be reloading faster. Um, secondary battery is going to be reloading and my continuous AA damage is going to be improving. Um, so this just helps. I've just been playing times where just having adrenaline rush helped me kill the last enemy target um, versus without it and then myself getting killed. So um, it's a good attack skill. I know some don't like it, but for me, um, I prefer it and I take it on most all of my ships. Uh, and then for 14 point, then I would go for gun feeder. So that, so that eventually we get to that time taken to switch uh, between shell type reduced by 50%. Um, and this actually really helped me uh, once I mastered this skill. So that's what I'd recommend for a 14 uh, point build. Um, next for let's say a 17 point build, I would then recommend going the heavy AP shells. So the damage of the main battery AP shells with a main cap Battery caliber of 190 millimeter and above, plus 5%. And we have 305 millimeters um, main battery on the Alaska. So uh, this improves, it's an attack skill, and improves uh, the damage. Um, like you got to saw some armor piercing in action in yesterday's video. So uh, this is what I'd recommend with a 17 point build. And then what would I do with the remaining four points I have? Well, then after that, I went. Uh, consumables enhancements. So when you master this skill, uh, the action time of my hydroacoustic search and my surveillance radar are improved by plus 10%. So once I master this, we'll look and see how much longer those um, both 
last and how that actually really helps. And then for a 21 point build, uh, I went for focus, but now it's called focus fire training, um, defense skill, um, the airstrike armament reload time. We don't have airstrike, um, but our priority se sector AA damage is plus 25%. And then number of shell explosions and AA salvos plus 1%. I was thinking when I referenced that we was going to buff the continuous damage, I was thinking that's skill helped with that, but apparently it's um, the AA defense and ASW expert. Um, we'll talk about the other skills in a moment. So you can see when I take this, damage by shell explosions, we go from five to six. Yeah, five to six. And our priority sector reinforcement, we're pumping out more damage now. So this is the... 21 point build that I go for on the Alaska. Uh, it's what I would recommend uh, for one to take. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I want to try to keep some of the other skills uh, unhighlighted. So let's just let's just say we mastered no that. And I'll tell you why I don't take uh, the other skills because I want to be able to see the full icon. Um, Naturally, you're not taking these skills because torpedoes, uh, torpedoes with Alaska. Um, and then with the current configuration of this ship, um, the consumable specialist means nothing. Incoming fire alert. I have priority target, and I'd rather spend one point somewhere else, like on these two skills. Uh, last stand. Uh, I don't, I've rarely had my engine and or steering gears knocked out. I mean, when they do have a DCP, if not, I'm sitting dead in water for just a little bit, but you're tanky in Alaska to handle it um, in comparison to maybe a light cruiser, which isn't going to handle it as well. So, yes. Demolition experts. Um, I don't take this skill um, because I want to invest in the consumable specialist and the focus fire training, so I get more of a buff uh, from my... Uh, AA versus um, the demolition. Now, with 10.7, uh, one of the things they added was the underwater explosion radius of the ammunition when attacking submarines, plus 15%. Um, since submarines just dropped, um, I haven't played a battle yet that I've interacted with submarines just because um, you can only go against them in ranked and co-op right now. Um... And there could be more of use for this skill in the future to see how the submarines fit in with World of Warships, uh, air quotes. Um, but I think uh, when you're dealing, I mean, because they're sneaky, you're going to get more of a benefit out of uh, these two skills over uh, Demolition Expert. We've talked about this. We've talked about this. Uh, then you have Heavy HE and Sap Shells. This is still a terrible skill to take on a battleship or cruiser um, because of the no I'm thinking of the battleship one this one's a little bit different for cruisers um, your damage is improved by your HG shells because by 10% and sap you don't have sap on uh, Alaska just arm piercing and HE but your ship detectability range with a main battery caliber of 49 millimeters and above goes up by plus 15% so completely um, Rex consumer expert and then some um, so no I don't think this skill is worth it just because um, you have only you're only getting one benefit out of this skill that's the HE um, you don't even get the sap benefit um, out of it so um, you don't want to compromise your detectability range in Alaska in my opinion so um, it's not worth taking we've talked about taking this um, survivability experts, no. I mean, let's see, if you, if you even if you throw it on, it goes up to 64,850, which is like, what, similar to Massachusetts? Almost, you get there, you're getting close. Um, but you want to use those three points uh, elsewhere, um, like on the heavy AP shells. Um, you're enhancing, the goal I think with the Alaska is you're enhancing your uh, main battery, and you're enhancing your consumables. That's uh, as well as somewhat the survivability, but it's mainly the main battery and the consumables, I would argue. So that's the route I prefer to take. Really, you only take survivability expert on uh, 
destroyers, uh, most all destroyers, and there's exceptions uh, for some cruisers like Austin you'd want to take survivability, survivability expert on, but not Alaska. Just just not worth it. Don't, don't spend your points there. Uh, and then you have some can-be activated skills. Um, there's two here. I do not like the can be activated skills just in general um, for several reasons. Wargaming has been introducing more and more of these can be activated skills um, and it's just ridiculous. I think for some marine captains there's like seven can be activated skills and so it's like have you really mastered the skill? If it's you have to be in a certain situation, if the planets and stars have to align for the skill to be of use and oftentimes when they're activated it means uh, your either your ship health is really low, you're overextended, um, or it's just enticing you to um, not good player behaviors. So let's look at these two. So you have the top grade gunner and attack skill. Your secondary battery reload time goes up. That's a permanent effect. Uh, reload time and negative ten percent off. But the can be activated here is that increases the reload speed of your main battery if there is a visible ship within your ship's standard detectability range. So my standard detectability range right now would be 12.2. Um, changes to ship detectability caused by firing main guns, fires on board, and other combat uh, events are not taken into account. Um, so main battery load time, if when this with this can be activated skill, is negative 8%. So basically means you have to get within concealment range of an enemy ship uh, for you to get this buff. Um, there are often times where you are, like I was saying, like I like to try to play within radar range, uh, to let's say you know the 15 16 kilometers away uh, with Alaska I'm definitely not going to be getting within 10 kilometers if there's multiple battleships and cruisers on a flank um, play at range um, and then I'll move in so this is just four points uh, basically wasted because you're not within the concealment range uh, your same technical range and you're not within your sec secondary battery range so it's just four points wasted that only works here and there now, it would have worked for me in yesterday's uh, battle uh, towards, let's see, uh, would have worked against the Palmer and would have worked against Neptune in the Buffalo. Um, just because I was kind of, I was taking most of the damage because the Georgia and the Azuma on my side uh, were running away um, and Palmer was pushing in. So uh, I would have had that buff, I guess, permanently throughout the battle. But that was a ranked battle. Um, you tend to be fighting more close range and ranked um, randoms. Uh, it really varies. Um, I don't think you'd get as much benefit out of skill than as potentially ranked. Um, but I still argue that you want to invest in some other things rather than a can be activated skill. Outnumbered. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, it is just right there, outnumbered. Improves your ship's characteristics if the number of allies within the firing range of your ship's main battery doesn't exceed the number of visible enemy ships. Your ship is not counted as an allied ship. So your dispersion of your main battery uh, is reduced by negative 10% and your ship speed is increased by plus 8%. Um, basically, this skill is kind of uh, enticing you to overextend yourself. Now, you can overextend yourself in a, a wise way um, in using islands, isolating one-on-ones. Um, but to me, again, it's, it's not worth it because you don't know the situations of when this skill um, is going to work or when it's not going to work. Another thing that I'm annoyed with these can be activated skills is that you have no way of knowing in battle if they're working or not. Like You have to be like looking at your mini-map or something to know whether or not you're getting the buff or you just notice a drop like in your reload time. Um, as you would hear. Um, so I just recommend going, not going with um, uh, can be activated skills uh, for the most part. I, I think I have some on uh, a few ships, but there's a reasons why, but not on Alaska, in my opinion. You can disagree with me. I mean, if you're going to take one of these two, the top grade gunner would be uh, better. And if you want to take top grade gunner, maybe I can look at how you would fit that in with the build. Uh, radio location. Um, after this goes master, the player will have the direction to this nearest enemy ship indicated to them. Uh, the enemy 
player will be alerted that a bearing was taken on their ship. So I believe it was with the Neptune in yesterday's video. I actually didn't pay attention after we killed Neptune if it went away or not. But I was radio located. So it said I had this little located icon. And uh, a player who has this mounted, you know, you see the ship sailing in this direction. It's, he's getting a little bit of a direction like, hey, nearest enemy ship towards you is this direction. So it's off your port. Um, I've seen players take it on Alaska. You could take it on Alaska. Um, maybe I can try to... Let's look and see here in a moment if there's a way we can fit it in. And what skills might you sacrifice in order to take it. Um, yeah, don't do IFHE. And then you have the AA Defense and the ASW Expert. Um, now, you're only getting the AA uh, bonuses uh, out of this skill. There's four, but you're only doing with AA. Because you don't get um, Airstrike, uh, Depth... We don't get, uh, you don't have any ASW, uh, anti-submarine warfare, uh, with the Alaska. Uh, it's a little annoying, but you just don't get it. So that means your airstrike depth charge damage doesn't get a, you know, you don't get the buff of the plus 15%, nor the depth charge damage plus 15%. You're only getting, uh, the continuous AA damage and damage from AA shell explosions. Now, that's still a really good skill for what you get, uh, out of the AA, but it depends on whether or not you actually have a carrier um, in battle. Um, if there's not a carrier in battle, uh, naturally, um, this is four points uh, wasted on your commander build. And again, there's other cruisers at tier nine that do a better job uh, of, if you're wanting to take an AA cruiser, there's other cruisers that just do better than Alaska. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, but you're only getting the AA bonus out of this defense skill so yeah i yeah, it's harder to take but i mean like for example let's say if you did take it let's see how the aa defense jumps up pretty significant 444 and 1932 and that's without even taking any of the combat signals so now our aa rating is still 79 <laughs> but i mean then you compare it to seattle you know seattle's 85 like I mean, there's a lot you can do with Seattle when it comes to AA. Um, so, if I wanted to fit on the top grade gunner or RPF, how would I recommend going about that? Um, let's see. So, we let's say top grade gunner. So, now we have three points left. Okay, so we've got three points left. If... Let's say you're emphasizing a bit more on your guns. I would say if you want to take top grade gunner, go with this build. Um, because, you know, your main battery reload time, that's why you're taking this skill. It's to buff your reload time. And then with those heavy AP shells, um, you're just maximizing not only your DPM, um, but, uh, well, you're maximizing your DPM in two ways. Your reload time and the amount of damage you're doing uh, in this case, you know, with uh, AP shells. So if you want to take top grade gunner, I'd recommend going with this build. That means you're sacrificing not taking consumable enhancements or the focus fire training. But hey, maybe that doesn't matter to uh, some of you. And then uh, if I were to take radio location, this means you're, ideally it means you're, if you're taking this skill, it's because you're dealing with uh, sneakier targets that have a better concealment range than you, like destroyers uh, or cruisers, like, you know, the Neptune was out detecting me in yesterday's battle. Um, what would I do? I think I would still lean towards taking the heavy AP shells regardless, just because it's, it's a good skill. Um, it's nice getting larger damage numbers on an AP volley on enemy targets. Yeah, I still lean towards that if you want to take um, radio location. Now, I was thinking, well, hold the phone, Derek. You know, the stimulation expert's a little bit better now. Um, let's say I wanted to take that. Well, if you want to take demolition expert, I would say go this route. Um, so you get that extra 1% on uh, causing fires on the targets. And this gives you... This is really the only anti-submarine warfare skill you get that's actually feasible with the Alaska with consumables um, and armament. 
since you don't have uh, depth charges um, because the explosion radius. So if you're like, you want a little bit of a buff, not only just to deal a higher chance of setting target on fire, which, uh, let's see, the HE, uh, chance of setting target on fire, 28% uh, when you take this. And then when you're not taking it, it should just be 27%. Uh, and then we can actually get that up to 30%. No, 29% with, I think, with combat signals. We'll look real quick. So, yeah, you could do that, um, but uh, I just kind of like having the additional bonus with AA. You could even do this. Why not, right? But um, I think, in my opinion, this is, this is the build I would recommend. You're free to explore other options as well. Uh, that is totally up to you. Um, but this is more or less what I lean to. Um, so this is the, the build I'm going to master. And then let's look at uh, combat signals real quick. Because I wanted to illustrate how your HE and your A defense goes up. So you have the November Echo set 7. Continuous AA damage and damage from shell explosions go up. So if you look down here, watch these two numbers jump. 370 to 388. 1610 to 1691. That's good. Um, HE, yeah, Victor Lima. Now we have a 28% fire setting chance. Without it, it's just that 27%. So uh, you take that. Um, da, 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 da. You take these two. Definitely want to take the heal extend to that secondary firing range. Now we're at 7.7 .7 versus, was it 7.3? And then this is November Foxtrot. The reload time of consumables um, goes down. So that's actually what I would recommend. Now when we're looking, I said I would show you how when we take, uh, was it consumables enhancements, this skill, how it buffs our action time of our hydroacoustic search in our radar. So now our consumable action time of our hydro is 110 seconds. Uh, we went from 42 seconds uh, surveillance radar to 46.2 second radar. Um, that is why I like consumables enhancement and recommend taking it on the Alaska. And then we took uh, the flag. Uh, what is that flag called? India Delta. Uh, which improves the amount of HP you're able to recover. So if I unmount that, 304, I mount it. Now we jump up to 364. Um, and action time goes up too. I just forgot. If I unmount it again, what does that look like? No, it's just the amount of HP you're able to recover. So now we're at, yeah, 364. So this is the a build in total I would recommend uh, when we're talking about the Alaska. Um, it's kind of fun to have the Hotel Yankee, but um, I mean, you could just drop that and go this if you don't mind having a 27% fire setting chance versus 28 it doesn't bug me, so I actually I would rec I think I might go this route <laughs> uh, with the signals uh, signals combat signals we have, and then uh, you can choose if you unlock a campaign collection. Um, I like the darker build, but you can have a, a lighter build on the camouflage. But I'm getting a little bit top off topic here at the end. Oh, for some reason that just spawned up. Oh, it's probably because of the time I'm playing. Yeah, 1215. Uh, my time as I record this video here in Norway. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was clear and concise for the most part uh, in talking about the Alaska. Uh, I actually haven't played her, I think I played her not too long ago, but the battle yesterday was actually from April, um, and I'm recording this video in August. So, um, Alaska is a really fun ship. I mean, you have Congress now. I mean, I can imagine Congress might be a somewhat similar build to Alaska, but I'm not going to buy Congress. I'm not going to give Wargaming my money right now at all. Um, 
so maybe you could even reference uh, this build for Congress if you yourself decide uh, to purchase Congress. So yeah, uh, Alaska, very sturdy, strong battle cruiser. I really enjoy playing her. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. And if you haven't already subscribed, thanks. I really appreciate it as we continue to grow the community here with you and we pump out more of these upgrading commander build videos. So until next time, Take care.